Hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to Cloud Lender Pro channel. Via this video, we'll talk about Azure restoration process. So in this video, we'll understand what is the process of restoring a virtual machine using a recovery service pod. In our previous video, we explained about Azure Backup, like how to enable backup for a virtual machine, what is the process involved, what are the components that are required, we explained in detail in our previous video. Now via this video, I'm going to explain you the process of restoring a virtual machine from a recovery service pod. So before going to the restoration, just think once, what is the need of performing restoration of data or application or a virtual machine? In simple, I can write something like this. If there is any data loss, if you have any issues to the virtual machine or application or your application or virtual machine is crashed, to roll back your virtual machine or applications to the working condition like before, we can use this restoration option using which we can roll back our application or virtual machine to the previous state where it was working healthily. Uh, so that is the reason we are going to perform this restoration job. So if you see this uh, details in diagrams, we have virtual machine 01 for which we enable the backup using a recovery service pod by using a backup policy. So if you talk about the restoration, in restoration, we have three types in Azure. So we can use any one of the method as per our need. So the first restoration method we have in Azure is complete virtual machine restoration. Using this, you can restore the complete virtual machine in Azure. Whereas if you have VM01, you can restore VM02 as your restore virtual machine. And the second restoration method is restore disk. And the third method is replace existing disk. Using the second option and third option, you will be restoring the disk or replacing the disk. Whereas the first option will give you the complete virtual machine restoration along with the disk. So you can choose any one of this restoration method as per your need. So up to your requirement, which one you want to use, you can use it and you can perform the restoration job. Now let us perform the lab in the Azure portal and understand how to perform a restoration of virtual machine using recovery service for backup points. In this video, I will not only tell you the process of restoring a virtual machine, I'll also tell you how you can check the restoration job details and if there is any error, how you can identify that error in the backup job details or restoration job details. Now I'm in the Azure portal. Let us go to the virtual machine blade. I have already created one virtual machine, VM test 01. If I go to the backup option, we can see the backup is already configured and there are some restoration points that are already available here, using which we can perform the restoration job for a virtual machine. So if we just recall the restoration method that we have in Azure, the first restoration method that we have in Azure is complete virtual machine restoration, using which you can restore the entire virtual machine with the OS disk and data disk. And the second method that we have is restore disks. Using this, you can just restore the disks of virtual machine. And the third method is replace existing disk. Using this method, you can just replace the disk without just only restoring the disk. So via this video, I'll explain you how to perform complete VM restoration. So if you are looking for restore disks also, or if you are looking for replace existing also, you can put your comments in this video comment section. I will go through that comments and I'll create one video definitely as per your request in the comment section. So before going for complete virtual machine restoration, you need to keep some points available with you. So these are the mandatory or prerequisites I can say before performing the complete virtual machine restoration. So if you're having a virtual machine with the name VM test 01, we should know what is the new virtual machine name that you are expecting by the time of restoration. And you should also know in which subnet or vnet you want to restore your virtual machine. Along with that, you should have one storage account, guys. So that storage account is used as a staging storage account. So this staging storage account is used as a temporary storage location where the recovery data will be uh, stored and then it will be used for the re restoration job. So since I don't have any storage account created in my subscription, I'm going to create one storage account. 
So what you can do is you can just go to the storage account blade and create one storage account. Ensure that you are creating the storage account in the same region where your recovery service vault and virtual machine is located. So just select the performance kind as standard and give the redundancy of the storage account as LRS because with this type only we will be able to use the storage account as starting storage account for the registration job. Now I'm going to create this storage account. Now we are creating the storage account. The storage account deployment is in progress that you can see on the screen. So before uh, you creating the storage account, just keep in mind guys, you have to create the storage account in the same location where your virtual machine and recovery service vault are available. If you create your storage account in a different location, that time you will not be getting the storage account under staging storage account option in the recovery process. So make sure you are creating your storage account in the same region where your recovery service vault or your virtual machine are created. So once this storage account is created, we will review whether the storage account is created with standard storage account and the replication or redundancy type is LRS. After that, I'll tell you what is the process or which options we can use to restore the complete virtual machine in Azure. Now you can see on the screen, the deployment is complete and it is giving me the success message. So I'm going to the storage account and I'm verifying the storage account is created with standard and replication as LRS. Now we will go back to the virtual machine blade. In the virtual machine blade, you can go to the backup option. You can directly click on restore VM for the restoration or else you can see recovery service vault. You can click on the recovery service vault. You can go to the backup items. In the backup items, you can see your virtual machine. So in the virtual machine options, I can see only one virtual machine here because I have enabled for only one virtual machine. If I come back, you can see the count as one. So only one virtual machine is available. So you can click on view details here, which will give you the same page that we have in virtual machine backup page. Here also you can see restore VM option. You can click restore VM here also, or you can come back to your virtual machine and click the restoration VM here also. Both will give you the same console. So once you click on restore VM option, you'll have to select the restoration point, like which is the latest or which is the uh, working condition restoration point. So you can select the one of the restoration point available here and click on OK. So that will be selected. Then you have restore configurations. In create VM, you have two methods, create virtual machine or restore disk and replace existing you have only one method. The first option is grayed out. And uh, after selecting the first option, if you come down, you can see the staging location. See the staging location it is showing here as a temporary location during the restoration process. So once you create your storage account, you will have to select that storage account in this staging location. So we will create the new virtual machine. Uh, so I'm giving the new virtual machine name as restore VM. Uh, I'm selecting one resource group. After that, I'm selecting the virtual network and a subnet. Then you can see I can select the storage account. So once you select all these details and once you feel the details are correct, you can go and click on this restoration job. So this restoration job will validate if everything is uh, correct. If the validation is successful, it will defaultly start the restoration job so that we can see on the screen now currently it is in the validation phase now you can see it triggered the restoration click on the view jobs to see what are the jobs that are running inside the recovery service vault we can see one restoration job which is in progress to see the details click on view details of this job which will give you the information about your restoration job it is showing one percent as completed and it is calculating the remaining time. That means it is going to estimate the time that is required to perform this restoration job. So on the top, we can see the details. What is your original VM name? What is your target virtual machine name? What is your storage account name? What is your target VNet name? All these details you can see it here. So after a couple of minutes, you can see the estimated time like 5% it is completed and another 10 minutes it is remaining to complete this 
restoration job. So after that, you will be able to see the restored virtual machine here with the new name. So if you see the virtual machine backup job, so it will give you the information, not only the information about the in progress. So if you are facing some errors in the backup jobs, if you click on this view details, here it will show you the error message. Like if there is any issue, if there is any a fault that time we can see the errors also so let us wait for a couple of minutes i will skip the part that is taking for the restoration job i will directly come to the completion of the restoration job so i have trimmed the part guys which is taking time for the complete virtual machine restoration since it is going to take time i don't want to uh, keep the time in the video so i have trimmed it now we will go to the view all job details and here you can see the restoration job is showing as completed just click on view details it will give you the information saying the job is completed if i come back to the virtual machine play if i click on refresh we can see the new virtual machine that is restored so vm test 01 is the virtual machine for which we perform restoration and we got the restore vm now i'm connecting to that new virtual machine with the same username and password that I created for VM test 01. See, I'm able to connect to the restore VM with the same username and password that I have created for VM test 01. So which states that the data, the usernames, passwords, whatever the information we have inside test VM 01 will be same even if we restore our virtual machine. So I will also show you some more details inside the operating system like i'll show you what is the host name of this restore virtual machine so once after i'm showing you that host name you will understand okay even the host name of the virtual machine will not be changed so if you are working in an organization where you have domain environment guys so doing this restore virtual machine will give you some problems because your virtual machine uh, restore VM will have the same VM name and even VM test 01 will also have the same VM name. So during that time, you might get some issues related to DNS. So that's the reason you will have to uh, ensure that you are following some Microsoft best practices before you perform this VM restoration. So better follow the Microsoft article and do it. And now see if I uh, check the host name of restore virtual machine. If I run the command host name in the command prompt, I will get the host name as VM test 01. So I connected to restore VM only, but you can see the host name inside the OS level as VM test 01. So this is justified. So whatever the data you have inside the restore virtual machine will be same as the VM test, uh, but it will have the data at the point of restoration time like the time when we took backup only till that we will have the data if you see the ip address of uh, restored vm it is 10.0.0.5 so from this i can conclude that our virtual machine restoration is completed with the data of restored point like during the point of backup whatever the data is there all the data will be available in our restored virtual machine so this is the end of uh, this particular uh, concept guys I believe via this video, we all learned how to perform the complete virtual machine restoration using the recovery service Vault. So in our next video, I'll help you to learn how to enable site recovery for a virtual machine in Azure using recovery service Vault. So guys, please stay tuned to the channel. And one more thing, if you are liking the videos or the content that I'm uploading in my channel, Cloudlander Pro channel. So I would ask you to subscribe if you have not yet subscribed to my channel and if you feel it will be helpful to any one of your friends, please share this channel with your friends also. And finally, thanks to everyone for your support. In case if you are looking for any training, you can even contact me on the contact details that I'm providing in the video description. Thank you.